Case 13 is a 13-year-old boy with a history of nasal congestion and epistaxis. I challenge you at first, based just on this history, to come up with a potential diagnosis, so you should really have a diagnosis in your mind already. Now I'll show you some images. We have CTs with contrast. We have soft tissue on the left and a bone window on the right. Here we have a contrast enhanced CT from just a little bit lower. Here are a couple of parallel CTs which are just one to a little bit differently. Finally, we have a sagittal image from a CT. So your first question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? As I mentioned, you might be able to get the diagnosis just from the history. Second, what is the point of origin of this mass? So where does this mass arise? Does it arise from the middle turbinate, the sphenopalatine foramen? the pterygopeltine fossa, or the nasopharynx. This is a case of juvenile nasal angiofibroma. This is a benign, locally invasive mass which arises from the sphenopalatine foramen. I can extend it to the adjacent structures, including the pterygopeltine fossa and the nasopharynx. As you saw in this case, the vast majority of this mass was in the nasopharynx. You can get bony remodeling uh, with or without bony destruction. The vast majority of patients are going to have nasal obstruction and epistaxis, which was the case uh, for this patient. Uh, it's vastly more common in boys than girls, so if you see a case in a girl, you might consider an alternate diagnosis. Uh, on CT, you tend to have a hypervascular mass, so as we saw in this case, a uh, very uh, enhancing mass. Uh, you may have large adjacent vessels and expansion of the sphenopalatine foramen. On MR, you're going to see similar findings. You'll see intense enhancements with flow voids. Uh, if you happen to have an angiogram, you may see a vascular blush with large vessels uh, from the internal carotid artery, I mean uh, external carotid artery supplying that area. And the treatment for these cases is first embolization to make resection easier and minimize the risk of bleeding, followed by resection. So this mass, as we mentioned, arises from the sphenopalatine foramen. Uh, in this case, uh, these images are showing that the sphenopalatine foramen so this structure right here, you can see on the right is normal in size, but on the left is expanded a little bit, so the AP diameter is larger, and that's where this mass is arising from. Uh, here you see an angiogram from this patient. You see large internal maxillary artery branches supplying this region. Uh, you have a significant vascular blush here uh, coming from that mass, so the goal will be to reduce that blood flow prior to surgical resection.